Hello everybody, welcome back to the L1 show. Today is November 25th and it is the best part of the week because Thanksgiving is over and we're doing robots and nonsense. Today everybody's, is a day for sleep. Yeah. Everybody's, uh, their colons are packed. <laughs> they're <laughs> sitting around, they're digesting, they're, they're sleeping it off. Great time to listen to some space stories. And let's start off talking about the moon because we're going back. And by we, I don't actually mean the American people. I mean, just a bunch of robots that were mm. built. Highlights from NASA's Artemis moon rocket launch. This is paywalled. Hey, <laughs> Thanks, New York Times. You can probably go to NASA's website and find photos and stuff, too. They like to brag about their achievements. It worked. We're going there. I guess probably there by now, right? Yeah. There's going to be some stuff up there. And we are taking a special passenger. The first CubeSat to fly and operate on the moon or at the moon has successfully arrived. Now, in the non paywall alternative that I read, this also suggested that it was going to pave the way for a uh, manned moon mission. Right. Mm -hmm. It's going to kind of like be the Wi Fi mm. for the manned mission once they get up there. It's going to be navigational. And it turns out we don't really have a spot on the moon as like an anchor point for navigation. So that'll give us a, a GPS like a North Pole, if you will. Yeah. Uh, or North Star, I mean. And uh, I was always told as a child not to do this. <laughs> I guess it's okay if you're a giant telescope. Uh, Popular Science reports the world's largest telescope array is almost ready to stare straight into the sun. That's what our friends at the Lowell Observatory do. That's, you know, remember we built a fancy epic server for them. They, uh, I should get out there now that we're sort of winding out of the pandemic and see how they're doing with that machine. They stare directly into the sun, too. I wonder what their thoughts would be on this. But without a telescope. They their do. thoughts are, uh, <laughs> my eyes hurt. <laughs> so we're looking at the sun is actually going to go into a more active. active period coming up. And we're a little bit concerned about what that might mean for us. So we're going to try <laughs> keep a better eye on it, this telescope. Definitely don't read the Wikipedia article on the Carrington event if you want to sleep tonight, knowing Ooh. that the sun is going to go into a more active period. <laughs> Nervous laugh. We should do a video about how to build your own Faraday cage. How <laughs> <laughs> you can construct a power transformer for your neighborhood from, from uh, you know copper pots and uh scrap parts surviving the emp that's the easy part the hard part is surviving when somebody sees that there's a light on in your home <laughs> <laughs> and uh here you know this is a little bit of a weird one but i thought like you know we love baby animal stories what about a little baby star? Oh, this is adorable. NASA Space Telescope reveals a celestial hourglass formed by an embryonic star. Now, this doc this photo has been doctored a little bit. This is uh -huh. infrared and ultraviolet, but uh, the star is making this this shape. I would like to have more pictures. Different angles. More pictures of the star baby, please. That should be on like someone's baby announcement. <laughs> Only a billion years to go. No. <laughs> Babies turning a billion. And while we were launching things to the moon, India was also busy. India successfully launches its first privately made rocket from their SpaceX equivalent. So that's got to be pretty exciting. It didn't actually go into space. It just did one of those like, you know, almost to space trips Touched just to make space. sure it worked. It worked. And moving on to some robotics, Intel is now saying that they have built something where they pointed out with only Intel technology, mm -hmm. all Intel parts, because they make their own stuff now, and they're going to detect all the deep fakes. Intel unveils a real-time deep fake detector, claims 96% accuracy rate, at least until the deep fakes are trained with this model as a, yeah. you know, it's, a, it's the spam. It's a, it's a more advanced version of the spam chicken and egg. We got good spam filters. The spam gets better. So I don't know if this is publicly available yet, but when it is, it will immediately be used as a the uh, discriminator on a new neural network that works to make deep fakes that it can't detect. It will be a cog in the machine that will destroy it. Here's a genius thing that I never even considered. When you've got an army of robots moving throughout the city, guess what they can do? Waymo is using its self-driving taxis to create real-time weather maps. Data will help improve Waymo's robo-taxi service. Because uh, the automated driving, that does struggle a bit with weather events. 
It's going to be funny when there's a horrible accident with one of the Waymos and they check in with it for weather and they're like, hey, Waymo number 75, how's the weather there? And it's like, oh, it's raining blood. <laughs> you know, when I was in San Francisco, I saw some of these just zipping around and then there was like a, a freak hailstorm and they just pulled over. <laughs> yeah. None of them are trained on any actual weather because they're all in like California and Arizona. You know, honestly, most drivers should probably do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, depending on how bad it is. Yeah. Uh, well, we let's hearken back. This has happened so many times. I guess the most high profile was probably Microsoft's Tay, right? Yeah. Tay, she came out, she was part of the world, and it turned out that she was learning from the worst of us, as well as the best of us, and it didn't go well. So Meta decided to do kind of the same thing, but to make it specific, but they didn't make it specific enough, unfortunately. Well, Meta's largest, uh, latest large language model survived only three days online. Galactica was supposed to help scientists. Instead, it mindlessly spat out biased and incorrect nonsense. How's that not trademarked? <laughs> Galactica? Uh, yeah. uh, my favorite excerpt from this was that there was an article. Yeah, Bears in Space was one of the generated articles. And <laughs> obviously, there is no history of Bears in Space. But this thing was like, yeah, that's totally a thing. And we've that's science that you can verify. The terms of service here basically spelled out. It's like, don't trust this at all. Yeah, I don't well, even know why we did this. And the other thing they said too was like it would spit out articles that were things like that that were obviously false, but it would attribute them to real scientists. Yeah. And the AI is just trying to satisfy the algorithm to get its artificial endorphins. Yeah, like it doesn't care about anything else, and there's no way for you to train it to care about any, anything else. Yeah, so we are not that close with the AI. That's uh, what we were talking about earlier. You know, with articles and stuff being written by machines, that's what you get. It's with the uh, gardening stuff, I find that a lot too. I look up a gardening topic, and at first it sounds okay, and then as you scroll through it, it's like that's not right. that's not right. This was written by a robot. It's too broad of a task. What yeah. you have to do with AI, you have to give it a very specific thing to do, and these people have certainly done that, <laughs> and the results, I. I was so curious. I did click you on looked, the link. You looked at it. But I had to join, I think, a Discord. Uh -huh. And I was like, at that point, they wanted me to join some kind of server. And I was like, okay, I don't, you know what? I don't want to look that bad. <laughs> Turns out there's a lot of this from the real world. So yeah. it's fine. You can keep the fake stuff. TechCrunch reports, uh, meet Unstable Diffusion, the group trying to monetize AI porn generators. And of course, it's an ethical minefield. So Kyle Wiggers is writing up this with uh, Amanda Sterling. Oh, he's got a partner now. So, like, obviously the with the pixelation, you can't really tell. This one feels like an anime girl, right? I think they're all anime, maybe. Oh, really? Yeah. This one looks like it could be real. Maybe. <laughs> she is. Is that a cat girl? Someone's, she's got ears, I think. Someone's going to make a painting of that in Minecraft. <laughs> Oh, you could export these directly into Minecraft. <laughs> Can't even tell what that one is. Yeah, I don't know what that it's, is. It's got a, it, the dark colors mean that it's probably like non-human, right? Is that a maybe? What would be that color? An eel. But uh, that one looks real to me. I don't know. Anyway, they are doing this, and a lot of people are saying this is not okay, but they're saying it's fine. Oh. Apparently, one of the things they tested was, could it do, you know, non-traditional requests? And the answer was no. That's what it generated. That one that you went, oh. Ah, uh, I see. Like, well, it they, had no idea how to do stuff that was, like, non-anime or non... Uncanny vast. They got to give it the deviant art library. Mm. Yeah. Then it'll be able to do all that extra uh. stuff. Well, we're going up on Thanksgiving. We're going to eat a lot of meat. Except for Wendell. He won't. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what if this, like, I, this probably wouldn't help with your situation. It's the proteins, right? Yeah. yeah. So but what if this was the only stuff that you could eat? Well, I wonder if this is vegan. Lab-grown meat is okay for human consumption, the FDA says. Just okay. <laughs> Not excellent, <laughs> but it's okay. This is coming. And, like, so I, I predict that because everything in America is moving toward ultra-processed and because the cost of food is so high... We are going to absolutely destroy our health even more than we already have because everybody will just gravitate toward this without really understanding the larger implications. And they're probably, I mean, it certainly seems like there's a correlation between 
ultra processed food and negative health outcomes. FDA doesn't say that. They disagree. They say vegan ultra processed foods are a much better alternative to meat. So the what I'm hearing is that we should all be growing our own food. So you're saying that there could be like an experimental food slash medicine thing that everybody rushes to get and we shouldn't have? Is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying we should be that's growing what, our own food. That's what Wendell's saying. Well, it's, it seems like that there are medical papers that say that ultra processed food is bad. I'm just trying to think of a recent parallel to that, and I just can't think of any. <laughs> um. Engagement challenge. What have you got? Well, uh, how about we are still doing daylight savings time? Boo. But we're getting rid of this, which didn't bother. Well, it did, actually it did bother a lot of programmers. I got to admit, this is yeah. a, a constant pain. The leap seconds time is up. The world has voted to stop pausing clocks. Okay. Because it's not reliable. We don't necessarily always get one. Yeah. The earth is fickle. We should end daylight savings, though. It's so sad getting off work at I bet like 5 and it's dark at 5.30. Oh, yeah. I bet the earth was on the phone with Mercury and she was like, this year I'm not even going to give them a leap second. <laughs> oh, I love screwing with them. I'm pretty sure that the reason we missed our last leap second was because the Three Gorges Dam dramatically changed where a lot of mass was located. Yeah, but now they're emptying it. We can get it back. <laughs> And I would not heard about this. Of course, uh, I immediately I went to Krista, who is, she keeps her finger on the pulse of small town health and wellness on yeah. Facebook. And uh, yeah, she had heard a lot about it. Yep. Record number of parents miss work as respiratory illnesses spike in kids. My cousin, uh, his son had had influenza A. RSV is going around, which also increases ear infections. And just regular of, old cold season. A lot of schools and businesses shutting down because yeah. of this. I've dodged it so far, but I, I know it's coming. There's um there's some fears about whether or not they'll be able to keep antibiotics in stock. Do you take antibiotics for cold and flu? For secondary infections caused by flu. So things like, I think, like bronchitis, the ear mm -hmm. infections, that sort of thing. There's so many cases that are building up. They're like, oh, crap, we can't keep up with it. Now, I read the story... And I didn't do any more looking into it. I, I wanted to, but I was too lazy. But I feel like this had to be funded by corn, right? <laughs> like, this sounds ridiculous I, I, I didn't to me. even think about that. But yeah, there was something off with this article. There was They were saying some really crazy stuff in here. Cows fed hemp produced milk with THC, researchers say. That wouldn't necessarily surprise me. I mean, is it a trace amount? Or, yeah. Or people? yeah. But they claim that the cows were acting high mm. which do cows process thc the same we do but even if you like you could eat all of that you could you could just like if we had a weed plant right here you could eat every bit of it mm. you wouldn't get high because it's fat soluble mm. and there's nothing to, in your body to extract the compounds that's why you gotta make brownies uh, so i was about to say how do brownies work then because it's got fat in it Oh, like okay. the fat, the the THC or whatever it is, gets into the fat of whatever you're cooking. Okay. And that's what your body processes. So that goes into your liver. The oh, cows makes... would not have. And yeah, that's it. That's why their manure is so good for gardening. It's all organic matter. There's no. I'm telling you, if you look behind, I bet there's a corn pack or lobby group. that Is the sponsors. link, is there a link to the study in here? Or is it just a report on study of the study? Yeah, the journal Nature Food. Click on. They that. probably own that. Yeah, click on it. <laughs> let's let's do some investigative reporting. Who who commissioned this study? We're not going to be able to find, find that it in here. It exceeds the acute reference dose. That seems like a small number. Anyway, I'm I'm not going to pretend I can read the text from that far away. But imagine if you did get weed infused milk from those cows that would be a huge money maker yeah that, that'd be a new thing thc milk there's yeah. somebody in california working on that right now <laughs> <laughs> and the milk's got fat in it so yeah that, that could work well uh here's how a, long could they add it to the water supply to calm the citizenry down here's a crazy thing like if you have poor self-control and you take this imagine when you're 80 and you have bone cancer mm. and they're like oh sorry 
Sorry, you can't have this. Fentanyl vaccine developed by researchers could eliminate the drugs high. So. It stops the blood-brain transfer, but only for fentanyl. Although I, I wouldn't trust that. Would you? No. I. Isn't it uh with one of those two, like once you take it, is it Narcan? Once you take it, like if you take another drug after that, like you're probably screwed. You'll probably not know when you're overdosing or something oh, like that. Oh, because it blocks the receptors. Yeah, same sort yeah. of thing. I couldn't remember all the names there. I think but. the big thing, what Narcan does is, like, the reason you die from opiate overdoses is because that also controls your uh, breathing. Mm. So you have opiate receptors that control breathing. So when you take too much, your body's just like, yeah, we don't need to breathe. Mm. And Narcan blocks those receptors and lets your body take back over. Okay. So probably has something to do with that. Yeah, I've heard if you do heroin after taking Narcan, that's not good. But I can't That's hardcore, why. though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, oh, you just died. Can I get some more heroin? Now, unfortunately, we don't actually have any way of measuring this, and this is an arbitrary line in the sand, but please stop. Please. <laughs> World population reaches 8 billion. I'm pretty sure Elon Musk keeps telling us that the population is going to collapse or whatever. And yet it just keeps creeping up. <laughs> 2050 but to, to 10 billion. The rate at which it's increasing is slowing, at least. Yeah, because the world's falling apart financially <laughs> and people are starving and don't have clean water, which is why we should reduce, reduce, I was at a reduce, com- reuse, recycle. I was at a conference this week where they were talking about how because the the people were having fewer babies in the 80s, the, there are uh, not enough people in the workforce now in a lot hmm. of. Things. That's Japan is a microcosm of that. Yeah, the boomers. And now the people who have to take care of the boomers, there's not enough of them. Yeah. Whereas the boomers, there were plenty of them for the previous generation, which was smaller than them. The the missing people from the 80s wasn't a huge deal until now because boomers are retiring. And there's no one to replace them. That's part of the reason, you know, people want more money, too. Because it's like, well, there's less people to take this job, which is why they're all just moving into robots now. Oh, so you're saying that having less people is good for the average person? Imagine that. Uh, The World Cup in Qatar has been a shocking mess. Uh, And the world initially was a little bit questionable. It's like, really? Really? We're going to let these guys do it? Like They don't have the best record. But now that it's happening, it seems like all the concessions they made are slowly being clawed back. Fans paid to attend the World Cup by Qatar have their daily allowance canceled. They're still going to have their flight and their hotel, but they don't get extra money for food. Which, why? Because some newspaper complained about that. It's like, why are people being paid to go to Qatar? That seems weird. Because it turns out a lot of people don't want to go to Qatar. Uh And you don't want empty seats because that's embarrassing. But now they're in Qatar. Some of the people were on the flights when they found out. And they're not going to have any food budget. And I bet eating at the World Cup is super cheap, right? (laughs) Mm, Well, you can't drink, so. Well, spoiler. You You can drink outside. FIFA head says fans will survive without beer at World Cup. Because you can have the beer somewhere else, just not at the World Cup. Not in the stadium. Yeah, you can go to one of those Qatar bars. I imagine there's a few, but probably not many. No, no, no. There's going to be hidden away kiosks out of the public eye. They can't be visible. So you have to go and like find them and drink in darkness. I mean, I'm, I'm not a sports person, but like... Isn't part of the joy going to the stadium oh and getting God. drunk and screaming for your it's favorite team? one of the most drunken sports that you can find. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Also, they announced that this would be allowed when everybody bought yeah. their tickets and flights and stuff. And I'm pretty like, sure sponsors uh, have been... Budweiser tweeted, this is awkward. <laughs> but then they deleted it. <laughs> and uh, one of the big things that fell out from the Twitter thing, we talked about this last week, but now we have a, a headline about it, is... All the fake accounts. And they did a very good job at pointing out some of the absurdities of our modern life. <laughs> Eli Lilly, C- CEO, says the insulin tweet flap probably, quote unquote, signals the need to bring down the cost. <laughs> You're going to trim off a dollar. Yeah, if we could have it on parity with like, you know, Canada or South America, anywhere in South America, pretty much, that would be just amazing. Yeah, but you got to socialize to get those prices. Mm. And Belgium, I was reading about, for some reason, Belgium has become the gateway to Europe in terms of drugs. I don't know why it is. Hmm. Maybe it has something to do with like the 
migrant stuff. I don't know, but Maybe anyway, waffles are involved somehow. You think so? Mm. Cocaine and waffles. Yeah. Maybe that's a new restaurant. What should think about setting up? Custom sees so much cocaine in Belgium that incinerators can no longer keep up. It's going to be more than 40 tons. Wow. I bet that incinerator smells great. It's like a rim world story. Oh no, some smoke leaf has arrived. <laughs> yeah, yo. <laughs> uh, this is also like a rim world story oh. in that it's a very horrible way to die. Indiana man dies after falling into a manure lagoon on dairy farm. Well, he, he was on a piece of farm equipment that turned over <gasps> with him on it. And it cut him up real bad. And so he actually died of bleeding. Yeah, well, that's what they say because I think they just didn't want to say he drowned in poop. Mm. There was a story many years ago about... It was in China, I think, where like there was a septic system. Someone fell into it, I guess, while they were doing something to it. Someone went in to go get them, passed out because of the fumes. Another person went in to go get them, oh passed out. It was like a continual thing. It was like a honeypot for snipers. Except yeah. It was just manure doing it. Yeah. The microbes. They set it up. Over in China, they have... Uh, there's a great tiktok channel of a guy and he's constantly just drinking beer and smoking in first person and eating horrible foods and it's the same video every time but it's so compelling <laughs> i can't remember what it's called anyway uh smoking still a big part of their culture over there whereas huh. it's fallen off in other places chinese man 50 runs a marathon in under three and a half hours while smoking cigarettes the runner who goes by the name uncle chen finished 574th out of a group of nearly 1500 Three and a half hours is a good time. Yeah. I couldn't do that not smoking cigarettes. <laughs> I wonder, they didn't go into how much time he was not smoking. They said chain smoking, but like how many cigarettes is that in that time? Just putting the whole pack in his mouth and then lighting them all. <laughs> also, if you were going one after the other, how long does it take to smoke a cigarette? And that, How many cigarettes did he have to have on his person? <laughs> Do you think he had people lighting them he and like, like holding a, them out? <laughs> Fanny pack. He had a utility belt just full of cigarette packs. It'd be funny if he was just trolling. Like he wasn't really, you know, and they were just. Cause, they're candy cigarettes. Yeah, there were people that were upset. It's like, oh, you should be disqualified. It's like, well, technically there's nothing in the rules. And it's harder, it. right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. That makes it extra difficulty. It's not performance. It would be anything. annoying if you're the person behind him. <laughs> you're just kidding. Like, you try to get around him, but he's too fast. Yeah. And, uh, constantly in his wake. Uh, and uh, I just I love these stories because we're in this crazy time where rappers are YouTube rappers now so they're not rich but they're kind of famous but they're mm. still doing the petty crimes just for the day to day and you get these weird situations <laughs> this is, it's, uh, what website is this? Young Dolph Murder Suspect releases song No Statements from Jail and that's that's what the lyrics are. It's like oh, I'm not going to make any statements from jail. This is probably going to be part of his his trial. I have to listen to it. Was there? I didn't listen to the song. Does it have like instrumentation at all, or is it just him well, rapping? No, they recorded his rhymes over the phone from jail, oh. and then they put a beat behind it. Mm. So it's weird that the song is about not making a statement, but anything you say in the song because it's over that prison phone system. Is admissible in court as a statement. And the suspect's been in jail for a year. I'm imagining like the prison architect thing where you you know you tap the phone lines, but the guard's listening to it like, it's like this is fire. <laughs> it's like he's nodding his head, like, oh, I shouldn't be doing this. But he killed another YouTube rapper, allegedly. It's all YouTube rappers all the way it's down. All the way down. <laughs> and Twitter, uh, I wonder if this was because Elon Musk took over and started reviewing things or did it just shake out naturally? Uh, no, it, the article says it shook out because a news, another news article uh, uh, wrote a story and then mysteriously it was fine. So often the way to actually get in contact with these big tech companies is to get a headline about them. Yeah. And then they'll talk to you. Astronomer locked out of Twitter for three months after a video of Meteor was flagged as intimate content. It's like you posted this video without permission and this is you know you having a good time with your girlfriend or whatever is what it what what is implied and in order to get their account back they had to say okay i shouldn't have posted that but it was their video so well oh, look at that hot action oh my god yeah, yeah the algorithm <laughs> so applied sexy. that erroneously and no one looked at it for three months what do they think this was just sex in a dark room 
What? Well, that's something. That I'm just sitting here watching it, <laughs> like, okay. Oh, so salacious. And uh, Herschel Walker, have, has that race it's going concluded into yet? All oh, right, yeah. So he's still campaigning. Uh, I love Dave Chappelle in his Saturday Night Live monologue. He referred to <laughs> Herschel Walker as observably stupid. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is not going to help his case. Although I, I don't think this is all that terrible. I don't. <laughs> Herschel Walker explains vampires and werewolves. That was the headline, but he didn't actually explain uh, uh, vampires and werewolves. He just said that he was watching a dumb movie and he he learned that werewolves can kill vampires. I don't know what that necessarily has to do with the Senate race. Maybe, Maybe he's trying to be relatable. I mean, Mitch McConnell could be a vampire. <laughs> He does. He does seem like he's at least related to Nosferatu. He has he? a certain quality about him. <laughs> There's something of the grave about him. <laughs> Have you guys heard uh, a Mariah Carey Christmas song yet? Oh yeah. yeah, I may have sought one out. Oh, I think I caught one at Meyer. It is. It is impossible to avoid. It's like sniper fire around the holidays. <laughs> you, I mean, you really have to work to stay away from it. But she is not the only voice of Christmas officially. Mariah Carey is not the sole, quote unquote, queen of Christmas, the trademark board said. So she was trying to get the trademark for this. But there's apparently another queen of Christmas that said the queen of Christmas is more ephemeral and generic than that. Maybe it's Mrs. Claus and she's protecting the spirit of Christmas. The trademark board agreed. Well, I mean, there was a lot of Christmases before Mariah existed. Yeah. Mm. There will be some after. I, well, maybe. I don't know. Maybe it'll just be nuclear waste, but let's hope. And this is the guy I was talking about. I'm like, I, I mean, you know, this is my opinion. I'm not making any accusations here, but I'm fairly confident this guy works for the CIA. <laughs> News.com.au says the, F, the FDX coach says that executives were, quote unquote, undersexed and d denies rampant amphetamine use. Yeah, this, this, oh, this is the only noise. explanation here. Oh, it's playing music. No. Sorry. There's no desktop audio, though, so we're good. But, yeah, there were a lot of rumors about, like, the orgy house, and they were all just, you know, going hard on stimulants to try to get things done, a lot of other irregularities. And this guy was their performance coach. We should get a performance coach. <laughs> <laughs> he says none of that's true. <laughs> Here's an idea. Maybe you wouldn't have to take drugs to get work done if you weren't, you know, also having an orgy house. <laughs> I mean, that could just be decompression, right? Like eight hard hours of coding and then eight hard hours of orgy. Mm. Oh, when do you sleep? You're on all kinds of amphetamine, mm. so you don't need to sleep. Oh, of course. And Disney's parks just had a real bad financial report. Did you guys see that? People no. are not going to the Disney parks as much as they used they to. They also had a hurricane earlier this season. I think the yeah, parks they have that fine. every year, right? No, I don't think it always hits the Disney. But uh, yeah, they they have a bad time, and so they're trying to figure out how to get people. Oh my God, is that this? That's the boiler snake. Oh, that's boiler snake. He kind of you guys probably can't hear him, but he kind of makes like a little. He sort loves of sound. he loves Disney. He does. Yeah, that's one of the things I don't like about him, but. You know, he's such a good guy that we just go along with it. Anyway, Disney trying to find a way to bring you back to the park. This doesn't appeal to me. Mm -mm. No. Disney is trying to build the first ever roller coaster that jumps off the track and flies through the air. Engineers say it's theoretically possible. That's they, a real vote of confidence from your engineering team. They filed a patent about it. There's a picture, but mm. eh, it looks like somebody just photoshopped part of the ring missing. I used to make these in uh, Roller Coaster Tycoon 2. It didn't go well. I feel like if you had even a little bit of weird weight distribution with your guests on the ride. What about a bird? There, there's uh, going to be a football team that goes on this and everybody's going to sway to the left. <laughs> it's just going to kill them all. Well, it's be like, you see the gap coming up. It's like, get ready to shake, you know, and then everybody yeah. dies. <laughs> you guys ever do that in school where uh, 
the bus would take a hard turn and everybody would run to one side and yeah. try to turn it over. Yeah. What were we thinking? <laughs> we also did, did you do freeze outs on the yeah, bus. Yeah. yeah where everyone had to keep bus. your it would window definitely, down. It would definitely freak the driver out too. So you knew you were doing something. <laughs> <laughs> I can see how they might be freaked out by that. <laughs> oh, you guys are just having fun with my career back there, huh? <laughs> Possible jail time for me. Yeah, that sounds good. Keep up with that. No one will ever believe that all the kids ran to one side of the bus. When but I, I think everybody would because everybody did it. Yeah. We all did the same stupid stuff. Engagement challenge. Did you do that stupidity in your country? Do you have school buses where you are? I remember one time the bus driver backed into the hill and the bus got stuck. Mm. And then we all got off the bus and that unstuck the bus. And he's like, please, nobody say anything about this. <laughs> yeah, that would definitely be some paperwork. Yeah. yeah. And finally, oh, was that a bit of a boiler snake story? smash that was the boiler that's what it not. sounded like it that was the <laughs> he has a little bit of a cough when he goes to sleep for a while that was that was what that was he eats too many poofas <laughs> it's, it's the sound of him putting on his cpap machine <laughs> <laughs> he's getting older he just inserts his whole head in it he's a snake <laughs> oh anyway uh last story before we go and console our our beautiful snake uh a good boy and i love Animal stories where the animals are so well treated and so indoctrinated with people, they get to a point where they're like, I've made a terrible error, <laughs> but I trust that any human can resolve this. <laughs> yeah. I just need to find one. Lost dog, quote unquote, hands itself in at the Longborough police station. So this dog was out with their owner and another dog for a walk. There were some fireworks or something and it got scared and ran off. And then a few hours later, it sort of figured out, okay, I'm lost. I don't know what's going on. And uh, it went into the uh, police station and just sort of sat next to a chair until somebody gave it some water and some help. As Rosie on the right, and then her brother Laser. Oh. Ding. Boiler Snake liked that story. Boiler Snake loves animal stories, but you have to wonder, like, is it excited because it's animal stories? Is it excited because it's like, maybe that's something I could eat? <laughs> I don't think he could eat that dog. No, he's big. He's like a boa. <laughs> mm. Ding. It's a it's kind of a sad one compared to the old room. It's like <laughs> just I don't know if they'll Michael even pick it up. Let's hope it does. Anyway, that's it for this week. Happy Thanksgiving. Prepare yourself for Mariah Carey Christmas. Bye.